Hello once again fellow flight simmers and cockpit builders. As promised, here is a third little part on building an MCP panel. But because when I showed uh, some pictures of uh, the MCP panel to a friend of mine, hi Dave, um, he asked me, hey, is that a standalone unit? I never even really thought about that because most of the time we just assume that everybody's building like an entire home cockpit. So, you know, I assume that you're going to have the distribution hub and everything. But he made me think about that and it, it is a good idea. You know, if you just want to build one panel, um, then this is what you need to do in order to do that to make it just a plug and play, you know, panel, just like the ones that you can buy for seven to nine hundred dollars. All right, so here we are on my overhead view again. And uh, obviously you guys hopefully already saw the other two videos. So this is what we got for the completed MCP panel. And you know, after my friend asked me about if this could be a standalone plug and play unit, I thought about it and I said, you know, they do have those little small Arduino Mega Pro minis, which will be a lot smaller to, you know, put into a situation like this. So I decided to go ahead and order one. I did have a little problem with the one that I ordered. So the seller actually sent me a replacement one. Uh, what happened was as soon as I was plugging it into the USB cable, it was getting extremely hot. You know, it would even burn me if I touched it. And I noticed it within like five seconds of plugging it in. So what ended up happening is, and I did a little bit of research online. And what happens is that this little five volt regulator here, which is supposed to be in use if you plug in like an external power supply, not directly powering it through USB that's supposed to regulate the, the voltage down to five volts. So that was getting extremely hot. And, and then I read online that you can actually just take it off and the board will still function correctly, but it wouldn't get hot anymore. So I did that and it did work. And that's actually the one that I'm using in here that you're going to see right now. I did end up ordering some five volt regulators. I think it's a LM1117 five volt. Um, so I did end up soldering a new one onto this one and now it doesn't get hot. Okay, now there is something else I want to mention about the Arduino um, Pro Mini is that the pinout is totally different than the full size Arduino Mega. Obviously the size is a lot different so it makes sense you know that the organization of the pins would be different. So that's something you really have to keep in mind when you're connecting you know your wires to make sure you're putting them in the right place because it looks nothing like the other one. So on this one, uh, the address bus and the data bus lines that are pins number 22 to 29, which on the other Arduino are somewhere over here, they're actually over here on this one. So these are going to be the ones that I'm going to show today. And then uh, there's some direct input digital pins right here. And then the analog ones are over here on this side. And then the, uh, the other direct ones are over here. So you just got to make sure that you're connecting everything to the right places, you know, so that obviously your wiring will be correct and everything will work. All right. So if we come over to the website for a little bit, um, we can go to the hardware section and go to the sim system structure section here. And if we scroll down a little bit, you see the, the diagram for the data in the address bus right here. So like I said, it's pin number 22 through 25 for the address bus, which is S0 through S3. And then pin 26 is the signal line, which is used for output multiplexers. 27 and 28 are the L and D lines, uh, which are used for the DM13A. And then pin number 29 is a T line, which is used for the TM1637 displays, which I have on my MCP panel. So if we go back over to the overhead view now, we're going to look a little bit closer here. So obviously all these lines right here that I have bundled up, those are the ones that were going normally directly to my distribution hub. And then from here, they would link up to my main distribution hub that would be connected directly to my Arduino. But since now we're making this a standalone unit where all we would need to plug in now is a five volt power supply so they can provide power to all the leds and all the seven segment displays and also the usb cable which is going to go directly to the computer running next plane and your panel should work so now all the address bus and data lines will go directly to the arduino pins on pins number 22 through 29 like i said a little while ago so the only difference here would be that now, instead of also taking the three wires for the input multiplexers and the output multiplexers to the 
main Arduino that you would be using. Now this is your main Arduino. So you would connect them directly to pins number 11, 12, and 13, which I had mentioned on the previous videos. And so basically everything is already contained here. So the only other thing also that I need to mention so that you don't forget is if you have your external power supply that is going to provide power to all the LEDs and the seven segment displays, you need to make sure you run a ground wire from there to the main ground wire on the Arduino so that it, the power supply is linked to the Arduino. But just a negative, okay, you're not going to connect any five volts from the Arduino together with the five volts coming from the external power supply, just the ground, or else it won't work correctly. I've had some weird behavior where all of a sudden, after you make a few button presses and you activate some LEDs, all the LEDs came on and then none of them would turn off. So that is very important to make sure you connect the main ground of the Arduino to the ground of your external power supply. And then uh, another couple of things that I wanna mention, uh, if you guys remember from the previous videos, I had one button, I think it was gonna be the approach button, that I didn't have enough pins for on the two multiplexers and also one LED which was the one on flight director 2 that I had actually wired to be activated directly by the switch so what I decided to do now now that we have an Arduino here is I took that that button that wasn't going to have enough uh, pins on the multiplexers and I took it directly to a pin on the Arduino here and then that other LED too that I had connected directly to the switch. Now I decided to break it out and connect it directly to a digital output here on the Arduino itself. So now it's gonna be working the way it's supposed to be working, not just automatically when the switch is uh, on. And I will show that here in a little bit. So just another thing I wanted to bring up real quick, even though we're not supposed to mess with it, is the configuration file. So if we go over to our SimVimX folder, um, and we can see that that's where our data configuration file gets saved. So if we open it, we can see what's contained in it. So it's really quite simple, you know. So that's why, you know, I love this system that there's absolutely no programming necessary, no scripting, no nothing. Everything takes place behind the scenes and all the hard work is done by Vlad and Roman. So this top section right here, the systems, I'm not even sure exactly what it says, what, it, what, what the systems are. But it's something that the plugin uses to determine, you know, something. Uh, the second section here, this is uh, it's called devices. Um, the only thing right now I have that in this configuration file is uh, the displays. So you can see that I have um, basically a display here at uh, multiplexer 13 pin 0, multiplexer 13 pin 2, um, and then, you know, on, so on and so forth. Um, the, the D2 is the type of display it is. So depending on whether you have a Mac 7219, a four digit um, 1637 or a six digit, that's what determines that. So you can see right here that this one says D2. These right here say uh, D1, D1. So these must be the six digit ones. And then the B equals 50 is the brightness of the displays, which I don't think is working properly right now. But anyway, so that's what that is. And then over here next you have the input section so you got obviously all the all the things you have on the input multiplexer that's on pin number 11 and you can see everything there so the e is for encoders the s is for a switch and then the b is for push buttons so that's how you can see what you have in there and down below that you can see that here's where all the things that are on input multiplexer on pin 12 which i call multiplexer number two uh, so you can see what the assignments are there and then you have the direct inputs which the only one I have is that button that uh, that's on B46 for that approach button on the MCP panel that I didn't have room for on the multiplexers and the same thing with the LED right here you have a direct LED that's connected directly to the Arduino which is the one for flight director 2 so that's that and then you got the LED driver which is also connected to a multiplexer so that one is connected to multiplexer on pin number 13 and the DM13A is connected to pin number 15 on that multiplexer and then these are the actual pins on the actual DM13A 0 through 15. So you can see there the assignments that we have there. And then you have the segment segment display output multiplexer right here and it's telling you the assignments that you have in there 
the n is uh, for a for a display as i mentioned up above and oh the l which i didn't mention over here is leds all right and uh, so here are the displays that we have here um the six of them i think it is so that's that and then digital direct digital output here's a led again i'm not sure exactly why it names it there and it names it over here too but this one basically is that one it's on pin number two of the arduino and then down here at the bottom you have the preferences for the for the devices like encoders or whatever so if you have a um if you have you know an encoder uh set up to do like if you acceleration or what type of encoder it is if it's a type one a type two or a type three um and then i guess maybe other things that would be uh shown right here so that's pretty much it for the configuration file and like i said we're not supposed to be messing with it you know manually editing it but it's good to know that you can look at it and if you ever need to reference you know what you have connected where this is a good place to go and get that okay so here we are in the simulator now with the mcp panel down below and as we can see everything appears to be working fine now all our displays seem to be matching what it shows over here on the actual mcp panel so that's good so now we're going to go ahead and try out a few things so um turn on a flight director and you can see that the light came on here in the simulator as well as on my mcp panel here and then we're just going to go ahead and put a couple of buttons here we'll turn on the heading select we'll turn on the altitude and um, i did notice a little bug here that um, if you turn on one of the commands which obviously we're on the ground right now so that's probably the reason why but i did notice that if you turn on a the other flight director and then you turn this one off this one doesn't come on uh, and that one stays on even when you turn it off but that has nothing to do with uh, SimVimX. I tested it without having the plugin at all, and it does the same thing in the Zeebo. So maybe it's just something that it's always done. I just never noticed it. Um, so if I turn off the command and then I recycle the Air Flight Director, you can see that it does turn off, and then that one turns on. Let me silence that alarm there. So everything seems to be working okay. And all my encoders, as you can see, they're all working and they're changing the displays on the panel and in the same, the same. So everything seems to be working okay. The only thing, the auto throttle, of course, when you turn it on, is going to rev up the engines because it just does. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. But basically, that's all I wanted to show real quick. It's just that, you know, even if you do um, wire everything differently, you know, directly to an Arduino without the distribution hub and as long as you make sure that all your wiring is correct then you have a completely standalone panel that you can use uh, if you only plan to build one instrument uh, like i said with simvimx and you guys probably already heard it many times we cannot use more than one arduino so if you only plan to make one instrument then you can do this you know whether it be an mcp panel or something else or an overhead panel or whatever but if you plan to build a whole cockpit or a lot of instruments, then you need to use a distribution hub for the address bus and the data bus. And that's pretty much it. As long as you put your wires in the right place, everything should work out fine. And then like with something like what I just showed today, all you would need to do is connect a 5 volt power supply and a USB cable and you're good to go. So hopefully this video inspired some of you if you never thought about building something like this because you thought it would be too hard or too complicated, you know, or you just never even thought about it. You know, maybe this will inspire you to start building something. Um, after all, that is the purpose of my videos is to try to get more people to realize that this is extremely easy, especially with SimVimX, so you can build your own stuff. All right, well, this concludes the series on building an MCP panel. And like I said before in the other videos, if you have any questions that maybe I didn't answer thoroughly in the videos or something that I missed, you can go ahead and drop a comment down below or you can write me an email at CosmoKid, like my YouTube channel at gmail.com. Well, thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.